We'll talk about that later on in the class. I'm losing my microphone here. The third verse, 2.9.35, Krishna says, O Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. Well, now you might say, well, this is illogical. And it is illogical according to material logic, Aristotelian logic. We have a whole bunch of podcasts on the subject of logic. If you go to the main podcast uh, page on our site, you can find these podcasts which call, are called uh, Spiritual Logic or uh, Transcendental Ontology. Those two podcast series talk about material logic, which is called, also called Aristotelian Logic, and spiritual logic, which is also called transcendental logic. The difference is that in material logic, two objects are either the same or they're different. See? So if Krishna says the universal elements enter into the cosmos, according to material logic, they can't also be outside the cosmos or not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, if he says, I myself also exist within everything created, he can't say, well, I'm also outside. You see? But that's material logic, and that doesn't work or doesn't apply to spiritual objects and persons. So when Krishna speaks about his position or his condition or his relationship with the material energy, he's not using material logic. He's using spiritual logic. And in spiritual logic, it's quite possible for something to be the same as and different from something else at the same time. Huh? And this is the basis of our philosophy. Lord Chaitanya called this philosophy Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva. Bheda means different. So, or difference. So, Bheda Bhed means different and non different. Huh? The same and different at the same time. And it's Achintya, it's inconceivable. Don't try to figure it out, you just drive yourself nuts. <laughs> if Krishna says that. I am in the, the cosmos, in the creation, and at the same time, I'm outside the creation. That's fine. He can do that because he's God. Huh? There's no problem. Whether we understand it or not, it's not important. That's not the issue. Huh? We could understand or, may, or not understand. But Krishna is inside of everything and outside of everything. Krishna is present here in the material world, everywhere. Certainly he's present by his energy, and he's also present by his will in the uh, material laws of nature and so on. But at the same time, he's outside of everything because this material creation is temporary and he is eternal. Right? He already said he exists before this creation. Everything in this creation is him, and then after this creation only he will remain. So actually only he alone exists and everything else is just a product of his energy. Yet at the same time he is aloof from everything. See, he's not attached. When the material world is destroyed and the energy is reabsorbed into him, he's not affected. See, none of this affects him. Creation, maintenance, dissolution, modes of material nature, material activities, none of this has any effect on Krishna. And actually none of it has any effect on us either. Except we identify with the body and the mind. And the body and mind are affected by material conditions. And so we think that we're affected, but actually we're not affected at all. 
because we're spirit souls. We're eternal like Krishna. We have similar spiritual qualities to Krishna. The difference is we are atomic spiritual entities and he is an infinite spiritual entity. You see? So we come under the influence of material energy simply because we think we do. And the root of that thought is the idea that we're independent from God. As soon as we want to have an independent existence or independent activities from Krishna, then we fall into this material illusion. Well, if I'm independent, then I have to go to the material world, and that means I need a material body. And that means I am my body, and therefore I get subject to the conditions applied to the body. Uh -huh. So all of a sudden now we're suffering and enjoying different environmental material conditions, thinking that I am this body, therefore the sens sensory pleasure or suffering that the body experiences are also mine. Uh -huh. So this, can, this idea of I and mine in the material world is the root cause of all our suffering. And Krishna here gives the key to getting out. Uh, to understand that we are in the material world, but at the same time we're not in the material world. Just like Krishna. Uh, we're, we're within everything, but at the same time we're outside of everything. It's just a point of view. And by your will, you can accept either point of view. You can accept the point of view that I am my body and whatever happens to the body affects me. Or you can say, I'm independent of this body. I'm just riding in this body, like Krishna says. Uh, that I, in 1833, Bhagavad Gita 1833, Krishna says, the body is like a machine made of material energy. And the soul is just riding in it. Uh, that's the actual position. When we realize that, then we become free of the sufferings and enjoyment of the material body. Uh, somebody might say, well, I don't mind the enjoyments, but the sufferings, you know, are bad. So I'll just be detached for the suffering, but I'll, then I'll come back and enjoy the enjoyment. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. That's a rascal. You... Uh, Either you are this material body or you're not this material body. Now make up your mind. Because you, if you become detached from the material body, then you're detached from everything. The suffering and the enjoyment. You can't have it both ways. So finally, Krishna says in uh, 2.9.36, A person who is searching after the supreme absolute truth the personality of Godhead, must certainly search for it up to this, in all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. This is a sweeping statement. This is a huge statement. Uh, if you want to know the truth, then you have to search out the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You ultimately have to come face to face with Krishna. Krishna is the absolute truth. He is the fundamental truth or nature of existence that never changes. He is the supreme cause. All other causes are indirect causes that emanate from him. So if we want to have a happy life, if we want to have self-realization, if we want to understand the supreme absolute truth, we have to realize Krishna. And of course, that's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is chant his holy name and follow his instructions. Uh, so, you know, actually, I, I was thinking this the other day. Uh, somebody wrote me a letter, wrote me an email, and basically said, well, now I'm about to get out of college, and I'm trying to figure out, should I uh, get a job, get married, have a family, have children? Uh, take care of my parents and do all this stuff? Or should I try to be re renounced and live the life of a sadhu? And, well, of course, you can imagine what I wrote him back. <laughs> but why should you take so much trouble? If you're already a devotee, why should you get married, have a family, have a job, 
take all this trouble and annoyance and frustration, suffering and, and responsibility. Uh, this is so hard. Yes, you can be a devotee under those conditions. And there are many devotees who are householders and have family and like that. But if you are in the point of your life where you, you haven't developed all these attachments, then why should you go into them if you know you have the choice? It's one thing if you have no choice. Uh, if you're so lusty or so attached or you're in some situation where uh, you don't know the absolute truth and you get married and you get into all that stuff and then you find out, oh, actually, uh, this is not my, I'm not my body and this is not my wife and children. This is not the, you know, there's all this material stuff doesn't belong to me. Uh, you find out the truth about spiritual life, but you're already in family.